Hello and welcome to West Country Wanderings. Today join me on the start of a new project under a woodland which is managed by the Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust just a couple of miles from where I'm living at the moment and um, I'm probably going to be returning to this woodland as we move through the seasons. I'll be returning it to again as we come to the end of the summer into early autumn, late autumn etc just to look at the change in the nature. Don't know what we're going to be filming here today so uh, we're going to have to explore this woodland together, see what we can find and uh, see how and compare that to how it compares as we move through the seasons to the end of this year and then beyond. There's a tree fallen in front of me and just wondering if there's any insects or fungi that we can spot on it. I would say it's probably been there about a year or so, so we'll uh, go and have an explore. Fallen trees are great for bone insects and lava to make their home. Certainly the lichen on the bark is still growing here. Where the wood has started to rot underneath is the first sign of fungal growth here. The wood here is less dense, which means there's more light and light to enter, which means a greater chance of uh, flowers and smaller shrubs being able to survive. Sadly, two more trees here have uh, reached the end of their lives. I don't know if this has been caused from a fungal infection which has started to rot the trunk itself. In fact there the trunk seems to be quite hollow so it does indeed look there it's starting to layer and that would mean the death of the tree because of course once it started to layer like that the tree would no longer be able to suck up nutrients through the trunks to enable the leaf growth and the leaves to five grow and mature. I haven't been to this wood for perhaps 40 or more years. Um, as I say, it's close to, to where I grew up and that's where I'm living again at the moment. And um, I w I'd like to become familiar with the wood again. Uh, I'd only visited it a few times back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. Um, but I think if I come here more frequently, get used to the, the sights and sounds in the woodland, and then I'll be better able to notify or notice any changes that the seasons make on the trees and the flora and fauna which grow here. We have another tree which has fallen here, and it's uh, clearly been here for some time, probably two or three years or more. And the first notable thing is that it uh, has a thick carpet of moss which is formed on the, time, the top of the fallen trunk and it's just wonderful and also to notice that uh, on the sides we have this uh, bracket type fungi I'm not sure the exact species I'll uh, check that uh, back and uh, put a, a subtitle up underneath we have a break in the woodland here and we have uh, fields each side that over there is Cam Long Down, which we'll see again when we do the southern part of the Cotswold Way. And on this side, the hill there, is Harrisfield Beacon, which you'll be familiar with if you've been following my journey northwards towards Chipping Camden. We also have the main Bristol to Birmingham Railway, just 
to the left of the picture there, which runs alongside the woodland. So though it is peaceful and quiet here, it is interrupted by the speeding trains that whiz through at up to 110 miles an hour. But uh, for the large part, it's quiet, very, very few people, and it's still to enjoy the sounds of nature. Now the wood continues on this side, and we'll re-enter it and see what we can find in this part. Now I'm wondering if this is a, an ash tree. It's uh, again a fairly recent fall in the woodland <clears throat> and it looks like the top part of it uh, looks healthy. In fact it just looks like it's just been cut for forestry. But uh, looking at the other end of the uh, trunk tells a completely different tale. Here you can see the bark has been completely stripped away and the trunk has been eaten with fungal decay and that inevitably is what has killed the tree. Now I don't know if this is an ash tree and um, this is ash dieback disease which we've come across before uh, we really looked at that when we did the uh, one of the tours of uh, Brixham but it's clear evidence of uh, blackening from the fungal decay there and you can see the original bark still intact there but it obviously has been completely stripped away with the black which is the decay which has caused the bark to die and then eventually fall off. In actual fact trees use bark to transmit water, they use the trunk to transmit nutrients in the soil up to the leaves but it's the bark which they use to transmit the water so without the bark the tree sadly dies. In terms of the other flowers, obviously the spring flowers which gave, would have given colour here, there probably would have been bluebells, maybe some wood anemones, obviously they've long gone and it uh, looks like there were some parsley, not sure what type of parsley, but it's self-evident from the umbilica stem there that it's some form of the parsley family that's uh, long died off in the past few weeks as well. We do have some colour over here though and uh, just take you a bit closer. This woodland plant here, very colourful berries, they go a deeper red, they first go orange and then they go a deeper red. This is uh, Lords and Ladies, sometimes also known as Cooker Point, and they are indeed uh, poisonous. I used to have these in a, a garden, I had a woodland garden when I lived in uh, Plymouth, and uh, we used to get deer, uh, it was near the National Trust woodland, and they would come up into the garden, and as soon as these popped through the ground, they would uh, make a beeline for these and eat these because of the colours. Uh, obviously the deer are immune to the poisons that are in these, but they are definitely poisonous to humans. I know many a nature programme now is highlighting the importance of mindfulness in the countryside being good for our mental health, to the point where it's almost coming a bit of a cliche. And uh, it's not though, it's not, it, it is important. Um, I've seen it on many, many programmes, people talking about coming into the to nature. And I know from my own experience that uh, come to places like this really does benefit your mental health and uh, I'm not going to talk any more long about mental health today suffice to say that um, if you do come into the countryside find a nice quiet spot like this if you can and just slow the pace down although brisk walking is good and obviously I've been doing brisk walking on the the Cotswold way it's also good to slow down go walk your pace right down Go down to one mile an hour. I know it sounds strange, we're normally walking, well, brisk walks about four mile an hour, I'm probably doing two, two and a half mile an hour on the Cotswold Way. Slow it right down to one mile an hour. The reason for that, you'll notice a lot more. Not just through your eyes, but also through sound. You'll be able to pick up sounds that you perhaps haven't noticed before. And sadly, that's another, yet another tree that's gone over there, so it does seem to be that this woodland has been suffering with uh, ash dieback, um, which is which is very sad to to see. Um, thankfully, this is a, an oak tree here, so, and uh, obviously they're not uh, they don't suffer with the ash dieback uh, fungal infection. And this one is uh, looking pretty healthy uh, specimen. Of course, it's not just about uh, the tall trees here: yeah, oaks, ash, lime, beech, etc. We've also have. Um, bramble there. Obviously it has flowered 
and it looks like the birds have already had a go at the uh, early berries on it. There's also another plant here, I'm not familiar with this one, which has uh, some fruits bearing on it. Intriguing shape on this tree, though obviously the main branches there are growing up. There's another branch here, and it is growing this way, and out here with some very healthy looking leaves on it and out across there. It's almost like it's tilted on its side. It hasn't fallen over, it's just the branch has grown sideways. Maybe it's done that for light reasons, because this part of the woodland over here is darker, and on this side there's more light. So perhaps it's decided to grow that branch out to get more light to do the photosynthesis to enable it to grow more thoroughly. On this side here is a huge bramble patch, which is great for birds. Now we've seen these nodules on the trees before. That was when we were going through Standish Wood. And uh, they occur when the uh, bark has been breached by perhaps a burrowing insect, or indeed a woodpecker or something which has caused an infection. And that's the tree's way of uh, putting a scab. If you cut your own skin, you get a scab forms before it uh, heals properly. That's a tree's way of doing it, it's protecting itself, healing itself over. But unlike scab, it, they won't fall off. You'll, those bumps will remain and often other residual shrubs grow out of them. And it then supports more, yet more life and nature. Paths in woodland always intrigue me as well. This woodland is about uh, one and a half miles from the town and uh, it's very infrequently visited and it always strikes me as to who would have created these paths and where were they going to. You wouldn't really walk through this woodland to get from one village to another, one part of the town to another. It's not that sort of woodland. Uh, it stands alone. It's not uh, a through route to anywhere. But uh, there's still plenty of paths which crisscross all the way around the valley floor here in the woodland. Just starting to rain here, just hearing the patters of the raindrops falling on the leaves, the canopy of leaves are above me. Beds of nettles growing here, just flittering in the breeze. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, first instalment of our tour here around this little woodland in Gloucestershire. And we'll be revisiting this woodland again, probably come back in a month or so as we get towards the end of uh, August or early September, just to see what signs we can see of uh, autumn and to see how the wood is changing, how the flora is changing. If you have any comments or you visited woodlands in your area, please comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, I do recommend, if you do get a chance to go to woodland, if you can go to a quieter corner of a woodland or a quieter woodland, just to enjoy the silence and the peace and quiet and nature around you. It really is a wonderful experience. Anyway, until next time, hope you enjoyed it. Please look after yourselves. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.